is up then one second all right so welcome everyone um, so my name is Carlos I work for ThoughtWorks for quite a bit now and all you need to know about me actually is that uh, I'm a developer and I think that should be enough for uh, this session uh, so let's right, get right on to it right uh, so this title is like it's a bit verbose right so why I'm even talking about this like what, what does this mean and uh, why am I giving this session, right? So the reason is actually twofold. Uh, so if you were at uh, Martin's keynote yesterday morning, um, and Jess actually spoke about continuous delivery, and Martin kind of started to talk about some of the topics in here. So essentially, like source control and merging uh, practices. Uh, but anyway, we'll get, we'll get to that, right? So, so the first reason for this talk is that uh, conti for continuous delivery, right? So that's essentially like people have figured out finally that it's better to actually deliver value sooner rather than later to your customer. And it um, can actually continue to deploy that value. So like any check-in will go straight to production. But you should, like business requires changes inherently. So it's better for you to plan ahead for that, right? Uh, which is not what the traditional approach to software development does, right? So then the second point is actually source control management, right? So you see images like this or this or even this, right? So it, you know that something is not right when you have to draw like stuff like this. Like it's too complicated, too complex, right? So in order to actually get to a continuous delivery or even like for continuous integration uh, purposes, um, you, can't have, you can't afford to have these kind of structures, right? It's just too complex and then you can't really handle it. Okay, but uh, this is like too abstract. So let's get, uh, I decided to put like a little story in. So to actually make us feel part of something here together in this room. Um, so think about um, an online store of whatever product. Um, it doesn't really matter. So this, like a couple of guys, like three, four developers, some QA, a BA, they start uh, this project and they get it live like very soon. Right, so just essentially they just sell, like they have a catalog of products, they sell something, and that's it. You check out, pay with a credit card, done. Right? And then uh, this is essentially this is kind of all right. Um, so like you, you commit and then you have releases off of that main line, of that trunk. And it all works out fine. Right? But of course that, that like it's going well. So business starts to grow and you have like more people involved. So then someone comes up with the idea of a shopping cart right. um, so essentially you have a, you reorganize that team you get more people in and they want to develop this feature that's essentially <coughs> sorry um, you, you want to allow your customers to buy more stuff at once right so you get a lot of stuff to your cart and then there you go you just check out once right but then this is this doesn't stop right and then someone else comes in and says, oh, I want the users to have profiles. Like, you know, they, they shouldn't have to put in the, like, the billing address or the credit card numbers every time. They should have like a profile, they log in, and they're all set to buy, all right? And it keeps going, right? So someone else says like, they shouldn't even need a login on a website. They should be able to use like the Twitter or Facebook account to log in. Um, so if someone starts work on that, but that gets dropped. Like, it's too, too complex. They have like a lot of stuff going on already. So they drop that, which is perfectly fine. Uh, they don't lose all that work they've done. It's there. But then it's still those guys, so the user profile guys, the, the blue one, they, like on the hallway, they talked to some guys that work on the shopping cart project. And they figured out, oh, oh, you're doing this. You should actually integrate, right? And then, but that's not, that just happened by accident, let's say, right? Which is not uncommon. And so they say, no, we're going to start this, and then we're going to get your stuff, and then we're going to integrate, and we're going to be all fine. Right? But notice that that arrow is right in the beginning. Right? So, and then these guys, so they dedicated like, a pair to work on that profile integration. But those guys don't stop working. Right? The profile is still being developed. It's, it was not done when these guys started. So you see how complex this gets? Like It's quite easily. Um, but then eventually time goes by, and this, the guys call it done. Right? The integration is done. 
No. So yay, like they will go like have drinks. Um, but is it really done? Like can you can you deploy that production? Not really, right? So that depends on the user profile, and the user profile is still that has a long way to go until we can actually deploy it. Um, and still, it is, it is not really done, like not just because it cannot be deployed, but you actually have a lot of changes that happen on the shopping cart and the user profile. And you have no idea what those changes were, right? Most likely, they will be like, so you got uh, your initial merge from the user profile. It was right at the beginning, so chances are they have to change the code structure or refactor a lot of stuff. Uh, so you have a lot of trouble merging this, right? So it's going to be very painful in a lot of ways. Uh, it might take you, depending on like on the size of these changes, like I think like this like merges take months, right? Because it's not just about merging. Like once you merge, you're okay. Like it's green, Git saying like it's all good, you're up to date, but nothing works. Like you run the tests, everything is broken. So I have a lot of regressions. So again, pain, right? Uh, and on top of that, of course, business starts uh, with this idea of a loyalty program to build up upon the um, profile, the user profile. So they want to like, just have like benefits for like frequent buyers, etc. But so these guys, they they learned something with the profile integration. <laughs> Merge, right? They said, no, they we're not going to make the same mistakes as those guys, right? We know, we know better, right? This is going to be the perfect project. So what they do, they merge frequently, right? So, but they merge only from the user profile. Is that where they started from, right? Is that really going to help? Oh, yeah, it will, right? You will make, like, you have less pain in the end. Like, if you just decided to merge in the end, you might not have caught, like, big changes they made in between there. Uh, so yeah, it reduces the pain, right? But ha what have we deployed to production from here? Nothing really, right? You have, you have some releases off of the trunk up there, but those are like bug fixes, like small enhancements on the original product, and you have nothing out the door yet. So what, what's next? What, what do you do on this scenario, right? You have a lot of code that was written, like valuable functionality, but you can't really deploy that because like once you merge that to trunk, you can't really just merge your user profile because like there's the, the shopping cart integration that business wants, right? So it's, it's not a lot of teams working on it, but it got very complex, right? So what do you do? So first, let's simplify this uh, graph here. So just with stuff that matters. So you see that there are four branches going on and they are not in production. And there's like that big release ahead of us, right? So it's, it's scary because you have no idea what's going on with those branches and you need to merge them and actually make them work together, right? Who would have thought that you actually need to work together? Um, but there's a good side of it, that these guys, they merged their, their user profile changes into the loyalty program, so effectively, you have only three branches, right? Whoa, that's much better, right? You're much better off. Uh, so, but it, it usually turns out, like, of course, it depends on a lot of different factors, right? I'm saying impossible is probably a strong word, but it's not too hard to see people just give up and like, no, no, we're just gonna get, uh, we're not gonna try to merge this. We're just gonna get the ideas, talk to the guys that develop it, and we're gonna do it again, right? Because it gets so complex. And uh, like each team, if they're working in an isolated fashion, they can easily just change the structure around because they're thinking oh, they're the kings of that branch, right? But then eventually some, everybody needs to merge and they might actually have refactor different parts like the same parts of the system in different ways, and then how do you actually manage that, right? What, what do you do? Like, besides crying, probably, right? So the feeling is actually something like this, right? You, you know what you should do, like merge, but you're not allowed to do it, right? Because it, it, you can't, right? Like Git, git like, is saying you know, that you can't merge it, right? Um, but then you were, you were stubborn, right? So you go, you go on, right? And then eventually, you actually like merge, you, you end up merging everything, and nothing works. So you start fixing everything, changing tests, like months go by, and then you eventually, you, you get to it, right? Also, it's working, right? Someone says, now it's working, we're gonna go to production, right? So again, party, like big lunch, booze. However, there's one thing, right? Like someone figured out that there's like legislation that prohibits 
uh, us from de the deploying that loyalty program, right? And now, okay, what, what do we do now? Like it's merged, no, 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 it's, the release is done, right? You keep saying the same thing, like you probably, the reaction will probably be like the business guy said, we can't go live with the loyalty program. And they, the developers say, no, 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 we are going to production. <laughs> like it's scheduled, it's tomorrow. I said, no, no, you can't, right? Uh, okay, let's just go with the shopping cart and all the rest. So no, we can't because it's all together, right? And then uh, that, that, again, that triggers a lot of reactions, right? So like business people like yelling at you, everybody, you get like, like you go home, you cry or whatever you do. And then there's this, <laughs> like you had this feeling, right? So everything was okay, right? You were sure, right? But there was like this, oh, right? <laughs> Shit. Right? So that's essentially what happens in that scenario. Like, no, we got, we got all covered, right? Well, not so much. So you, you really want to avoid situations like this. I would say, right? I would at least. Um, oh, wait. So we talked about a lot of the, the problems. Let's have like a deeper look just to understand better what was going on. Like, I know it was like a big example but I wanted to get the message across, right? So the first one was that business couldn't really meddle into the software, right? So software was dictating uh, business decisions, right? So that's like, like just wrong. It's, it should be the other way around, right? So software is there to actually make business run or like, like have something, uh, you can have something delivered uh, before your uh, competitor does, right? So that's all about it, right? You can be like two years developing a solution but then it gets like six months in, you discover that this guy just released something new, right? That does exactly the same thing. So what do you do? You can't just stick to that plan, right? Oh, in two years we're gonna release it, it's gonna be much better, right? You just need to, to change really fast, right? And Martin touched that on that as, as well uh, yesterday morning on his keynote. Uh, so it's essentially that perception that you can just plan ahead and then like give someone to develop and actually release it. It's just wrong, it doesn't happen like that. All right, so that was like the first problem that we see. And the other one, like this is a more technical one, is the, the merge hell. Right, so those merges were not an easy thing uh, to handle, right? But why was that? Like there was like, I don't know how many people working, it doesn't matter, like 14, four, five teams working separately for I don't know how many months or years. And um, nobody talked, right? Oh, maybe actually these guys talked on the hallway and then decided to merge that. Uh, but that was it, right? There was no formal, there, that was not uh, frequent, right? Uh, so you had this painful merge and you had this even more painful merge. Uh, but then you can ask, well, why is merge, like what is the problem with merging, right? I mentioned the, it's not merging itself, but it's like the side effects, what happens after you merge? Right, depending on this, the, the type of changes you have, like this change, like any source control tool will handle this for you, right? You don't even, like SVN or Git, they will handle like three-way merges uh, easily, and then you don't have to worry. That's fine, right? But then what if you have something like this? Like you have changes that are completely the opposite, right? So one guy is adding 14 and the other one is subtracting seven. Right, what, what do you do? And then remember, that was like, I don't know, a year after that change actually happened, right? So do you like, you get up and you try to find the guy around, the guy quit, the guy's in another country, he's dead, I don't know. <laughs> uh, so what you, you can't really do, like you need, need to actually investigate. So this takes a lot of time, right? You have no idea. I'm talking about um, um, like semantic changes, not even just like refactoring, right? So sometimes you have like a lot of, you have no idea what the guy had in mind when he was doing that refactoring and you can't talk to him. So you might just do it your own way, but it's gonna break someplace else. So it never stops, right? It's like a lot of small issues that will pile up and it never ends. And there's like sneaky conflicts as well, right? So if you have like you add a new file, there's no conflict in this, but it's gonna break, right? So you're including a file that doesn't exist anymore, essentially. Um, so like if you don't have proper test coverage in there, boom, it breaks. And so far, so I think the idea here is not about merging code specifically, but that the fact that you're merging a lot of code will lead to regressions 
inevitably, right? However, like I said before, the loyalty team, they learned something from the, their peeps, right? So they merged it frequently, but what, what, what good was that? Right? Maybe they had like a little less pain when they had to merge, but they were, they were just like merging from this guy here onto them, and they like forgetting that there was a whole lot of other stuff going on out of this universe here, right? But they had like a good intention, right? Because they figured out that this is, tr like they figured this out, right? So like the longer you go without merging, the, the harder it gets because like you have more differences, right? So if you, if you don't stop and look, oh, this guy, oh, this is big refactoring here. Like if you know like the day the guy starts to refactor it, it's much easier to actually adapt or just sync up than to actually like after six months, then you see, oh, they changed everything. They, they, they're not using Java anymore, right? They moved to Ruby, right? Like you can't really afford that. Um, but then again, this practice here, like I said, just to give it a name, like it's the Merge Monkey, right? Merge Man. So it, it's probably the shittiest job one can ever have. So what usually happens, like this is probably not the same guy that was merging uh, all the time. So like that's usually a rotating role, like you do like every couple of days or every week. Like every Monday, it's merge day, right? So have a task on the board there, someone has to do it, right? But you don't make the same person do it again because it, like, it's, <laughs> it's, it's too hard. Hello? Oh. All right. Uh, anyway, so then the merge marking kind of helps you in that sense. Like if you were doing this like on the, the original one against everything, it's like, I don't know, four or five merges on a single day and you have like all different sorts of things going on. Uh, even if you, if, you, if you succeed at that, it doesn't really help you because there's like a lot of stuff going on outside your world that like you can get this curve a little bit down, but they over time they're still gonna pile up, right? So then the, the difference are, are still gonna increase. Um, so essentially that's, it's just mitigation, but it, like you were, you were attacking the wrong front. Like you shouldn't be focus like on that approach. Um, so yeah, and the other thing is, how do you even, like continuous integration, right? How would you structure like pipelines and, like anyone has any idea what to do here? Like if you want to have like tests running against all of these, right? You would need, like, I don't know, at least like five or six different pipelines isolated, right? So like, how do you actually manage that and, and what good would that even be, right? So you, let's say you, you need like five or six pipelines. Yeah, like one for trunk, one and one for each of the, those colors. But then how effective would they even be? Because like they are isolated, right? So they, like shopping cart, maybe it works perfectly, but the moment that you merge that to trunk, it's gonna stop working, right? Nothing is gonna work. So like that's like a false sense of security that you have. Um, by having out and now I just I have 100% coverage. It's all good, right? But the moment that you merge that, it's just like even the tests are gonna break because tests have been refactored. So essentially, like you work in an isolated way, and then you still have that integration phase, right? That everybody has heard of. Um, so essentially, when you have like before that release, you will merge these three branches into the four branches, like including trunk. Okay, you merge successful, so you have the whole integration phase to see if everything works, right? And not even mentioning like external services or anything like that, but uh, you get the picture, right? It just, it's too much to handle, where you should actually be focusing like on, I don't know, new, new functionality. Um, and I just wanted to mention also the, um, the, the formal term like Martin has on his uh, Blicky, uh, promiscuous integration. That was essentially what these guys were doing Right, so if you look at the, the Blicky, there's like some more uh, uh, comparisons against other uh, patterns. But in a nutshell, that is like promiscuous is not a, a good adjective um, in this sense, right? Because you should actually, everybody should be committing. We'll, we'll go into that in a bit. And there's one more thing actually, refactoring. I mentioned a lot of times refactoring, people refactoring uh, different parts, different branches. Um, but what tends, tends to happen in scenarios like this is that people just say, no, no, whoa, don't touch that. Right? This is, 
This is common code, right? Dude, stop, right? Someone might actually stop you from um, refactoring or making like the code cleaner because they know like, oh, now yeah, I'm the guy that's gonna merge next week, right? So you're not touching this code. Like wait until Tuesday, then you can touch it, right? So that's very common to happen. So you, 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 can't, you can't afford that, right? You, you, like you have people willing to actually make the code better, but you stop them because like of the process issue, right? So that, that's just wrong, right? And not to mention the undeployable, the whole pile of undeployable code you have. So like at any given point in time here, we could just deploy trunk. They in fact was being deployed from trunk, like people were working on the main line and deploying from there, but nothing else was deployable, right? So it, it's just like, it's wrong. And like you can usually get people to understand you if you, if you talk about money, right? It's much easier to get the people's attention and say, no, we're spending money here. Right? Oh, oh, wait, how? Right? And just mention like all the time that, I don't know how many months went by here, but like all the like, sell, people's salaries, you're paying people's salaries and then your customers are not seeing anything. Right? They're still using like the old, old website with no shopping cart, with no uh, login, with no loyalty program. And they might not even see that, right? So it's essentially a money problem. Like time is money and then uh, if you approach it the money way, people might actually listen to you. All right, so that's a lot of problems, right? So what do we, what do we do? Like it's just, I, I, I've said a lot of times, it's wrong, it just, it doesn't feel right. You have like, you're spending a lot of time on the wrong fronts. So I like this quote uh, by Dan Boder, where he essentially says that feature branching, like using your source control to, to <coughs> sorry, to handle different aspects of your application, you're just like, it's like cheating. Right? You should, it's your responsibility to take care of it. Like if your application requires different behaviors to be plugged in and out, you need to do that yourself. Like it's, it's your responsibility to do that. But again, responsibility is overrated anyway. So maybe you just don't want to listen to him, right? But I got a couple more. Like Jess uh, and Dave Farley. They have like, it's, it's a trap essentially, right? So it's, oh, no, this is, we just branch off and then later on merge, it's all good, right? But then those, all those problems that we talked about will eventually come up, right? And then Stacy Crow is more like straight to the point. It just said, don't, don't do that. Use an abstraction instead. Right. So this is like very neat. Um, and it kind of tells you like some possible solution. Like you see the word abstraction being used here. Um, or like, uh, like on, this, um, on the other, I then bothered called, he would say like ability to easily swap in and out features. So you kind of get an idea of like what a better way of doing it would be. Right, so like, like I said, it's your application's responsibility to actually abstract features or functionalities and be able to handle them. So you, you take that responsibility onto, we, we take that responsibility onto us like as developers or as the development team, right? And then you move towards something that's much simpler, like trunk-based development. Uh, there are like a different terms. Uh, for this, but trunk-based development is like very clear, like you base your development off of trunk, like you see here. So this is like pretty much the same as the first um, graph that I showed you early on. But then you don't know what like features are being committed, like those commits, why are those commits? Right, they're being released. So how do you handle like different like shopping carts? Like let's say different features like shopping cart. or loyalty program. Like if I check in, like I start working on it, and the first thing I'm gonna do about the shopping cart is add that icon, right? Click on the shopping cart and nothing happens, right? If I commit that and it gets released, well, what's the value? Like I need to be able to like work on that and then wait until like, like, a, like a substantial amount of uh, working code to actually make users use that. Uh, and the answer to that is actually very simple. This is like simplistic answer, but we'll, we'll expand on that, right? An if statement, right? That's the simplest possible thing that will allow you to not have all that pain and then work on a single uh, trunk, right? So everybody will commit to that. All your CI pipelines are gonna run off of that, 
and you can run like different sets of uh, tests. So, for example, shopping cart, right? I want my shopping cart, I want to assure that shopping cart works, but I also want to ensure that uh, when the shopping cart is off, the existing website doesn't break. So, but you will do that all of the, of the same code base, right? So we just swap these if statements, right? So there are many ways of implementing this, but I can be a text file, it can be very simple. Uh, it's the simplest thing ever. Like you just have like a hash of values. And then like so shop cart is, shopping cart is on, you should see the link. If it's not, I shouldn't, right? And then the layout, nothing else should break. Uh, but this is like I said, it's very simplistic, right? But there's a name for it. Like we expanded uh, on it a bit. But like people call it like feature toggles, feature flags, feature bits, like several different names to handle it. But like I said, at the end of the day, it's just like an if statement, right? You turn it on or off. But if statements are ugly, right? You, you can't really afford to have like if statements all over your um, application. And like it's, it's gonna clutter your unit tests and all your types of tests. But then it's like any, anything else, you just like, you get a better design for it. So one thing that, for example, that you can do is um, like have an abstraction layer in between something, right? It can be like a shopping, shopping cart purchase or a, a, a regular purchase and a shopping cart purchase. And then all your client code is gonna go into like this single layer and then they probably like, like it's, you can use like composition inheritance, it doesn't really matter. But the thing is like you have one central point and that guy is gonna decide what to actually route you to. And if, for example, like front end code, if you just like remove, if you have a link for, I don't know, a newsletter, like you're working on the newsletter, if you just remove that link, people won't even know, right? So if you, like, the, the, the users of your website, they are not gonna like meddle around and like try different URLs, you don't even have to worry, like you just take the link out, so that's like a single if statement or a single place that you have to change, and then you can keep developing that. Right, and there are a bunch of approaches. Like, so if you look at this abstraction layer here, you can do it like a big bang approach. So, like, like this shopping cart is a good example. Right, you have your shopping cart; it's been developed, but you, you, it doesn't really work until you have like a set of features. So, you want to wait a bit until like two months in, when you have enough stories done to actually toggle it on. But for other things, you can do it like in small pieces. Like also this, this, this page is already done. Like I'm just like refreshing the, the layout or something. And then I, can, I, I don't mind having two different styles. You just like do it right away. Like you always, you can leave it around. Like if you're working on or if you just deployed it, you can leave it like the two states. Like in case something goes wrong, you just revert it back. But then again, you are in control. Like you're not depending. So I think the message is that you're not, you are doing that yourself and you, you know what you're getting yourself into. You're not relying like on SVN or Git uh, to actually do that for you. And I actually had a case on a project that SVN actually broke. So we had like four branches, it had to merge all together and SVN would just crash. So there's a, a bug on, open on SVN from our team there because they would just, we had to download the source code, like add some logging around, recompile it to see what the issue was and then they send the patch. Right. So if you actually get to the point that you break your <laughs> like SVN, it, you're not doing it right. But anyway, right. so it's just, um, and again, you can like refactoring becomes much easier. Like I said, you won't have that guy say, "No, I'm going to merge next week, so don't do anything." It just flows. It's like on trunk. Everybody is on the same page, and then you can just do whatever you want, and then people will know right away. Like, because people are pulling, or if you check something in that's actually gonna break, you see like the, your build is gonna become red because it's a single build, right? It's, it's not working in an isolated way. But then it comes with the price, let's say, right? So there are some rules that you need to actually, you need to follow, uh, because it, like if you, especially if you were used working on like isolated branches, you need to be careful not to break other people's, uh, or not stop other people from working. Essentially, I think that's the most important thing. So like some teams will have like actually a hook. If you break the build, you revert that change set right away. Like so you're never blocking anyone else. Because it can get very nasty like if you have different 
team, like let's say you have a team in the US, like in China and in India, working in different time zones, and then the guy like, commits something, the bill becomes red, and he goes home, right? So like you have, there's a whole day of the other, other guys working, and the bill is broken, and you have no idea. So like usually we just revert that and keep working, and you tell the guy, right? But then you need to like, it, it's a different approach, right? So there are some rules, like, so the, f the first one that I would say, that kind of goes, it's like the most important one, and then pull the other ones together, is like continuous integration, right? So if you have one single pipeline running, like one in front trunk from a single place, like everybody is on the same page at any given point in time. So like if that guy checks in and goes home, like you, you tell them, give him a hard time about that, so the next time he doesn't do that, or implement something that will revert automatically, right? But this is what holds everything together. Or with like, if you don't have like automated tests, or like a single build, you can't really afford to like have everyone work on the same place because they might just might as well just create four different folders right? for those, their things and like have different builds like oh, like trunk, doing trunk based development right but then if you look at the a trunk it's just like siloed right so instead of having the branches they have different folders inside so it's important that you run like it's one big project going on and of course keeping the build green like I said you can't really block other people. And they're not just being green, but always releasable. So this is kind of a stretch for some corporations. Like they have like traditionally, they have like long cycles, long release cycles. So like you start preparing for a release six months in advance. Um, so this might be a stretch. But anyway, if, the, if the, your trunk is green, if the build is green, you should be able to just to call it releasable or like releasable to an integration environment, let's say, right? But it's still, it's releasable. Like you, your tests are passing, like your build is passing, your tests, all tests are passing, integration tests, and then you can actually deploy to a UAT environment and people can look at it. Or even you can just say, oh, this build is green, just push the button, it's gonna go to production, right? If you're doing continuous delivery kind of thing. Uh, and again, like test coverage, it's like very important, otherwise you can't really uh, we, we'll talk about branching patterns now. So I'm gonna go back on test, testing, pat, uh, testing coverage and testing patterns. Um, let's actually do that right now here. So one, one pattern that you might have, especially for, this is especially important I think for big um, corporations, like I mentioned. If you have like a long release cycle, you need to stabilize, you need to have a lot of different teams. So like you send an email and say, I'll oh, have a release something to be released, right? And then from that point on, it takes, I don't know, six months to actually release it, right? That's like a lot of corporations will, will have that time frame that you have to wait until you can release it. But that, that shouldn't stop you, because like those six months, people are gonna be meddling around and like, saying, oh, this is wrong, or they're testing it. Oh, don't touch anything. I don't want you to break anything. Just to stop doing work, right? So you can't, you can't afford to do that, because everybody's working off of the same place. Right, so the, the, the pattern in here is you have like release branches, like numbered release branches or whatever. So you have like 1.0, this is the release. So the moment that you have like, oh, I'm gonna, I wanna go live with this feature set. You cut the branch and then you don't stop anyone else from working, right? So you will, you will, like, will duplicate the suite of tests that you had at that point in time and then everybody else can keep going. You can even have another one, uh, another release cut and then this will allow, like let's say this takes six months, like that branch is gonna be there and you don't have to worry. Like if you find one or two bugs, you usually fix them, like you try to reproduce them on the on trunk and then later on merge them back. Because people tend to forget, like I put it there, they should avoid fixing on the branch and putting it back. Because what usually happens, you fix something, like take one day to fix, and then you like you go like for have to have lunch or have beers and you never remember to actually merge it back. Right, so but if you do it on trunk first, like write a test to reproduce that, oh yeah, it's a bug. So you fix that and then you cherry pick into the, your branch. Right, so this allows uh, for like these traditional approaches to actually work with trunk-based development. Otherwise, everybody would just have to like go home and sit until the release is done, right? Um, and another pattern 
Like, because branches, like it was written here before, like branches are not evil, right? Just people use them for evil purposes, let's say. Um, so this is a pattern, I think GitHub uses it, like a lot of different corporations will use. You have a trunk, and then you have production, a production branch, and like any time you merge anything into production, that is actually deployed to production, right? There's a hook that like right away deploys to your audio production service, or you can do like pull requests. I think GitHub actually does pull requests. Like you just send a pull request to production, and if you want to have like someone review it, or like a change board, uh, check it, or it fills some form out, you can do that, like you just like one step. If you can't really afford, like go all the way into production, once you check in, this is, a, this is a nicer way, like you just have one different branch and then don't stop anyone from working. And then on top of this, you can actually have um, like a, an intermediate one that can be used for different purposes. Like some people do this like for QA. I don't like that very much, but there's a different topic like about the, the, how QA should work on a team. But I, I call it dog food. So the, the biggest example I think would be Facebook. So Facebook, they, they're known for having this um, internal Facebook version. So their employees, the Facebook employees, who use this version of Facebook before anyone else sees those features. So it's a way of like actually getting feedback, like if there are bugs, they can, they can handle it internally. But like very few companies could do that. Like if I, if I write a, I don't know, a system that sells car insurance, like if, if I, even if I let my employees use it, like I, I will use it once a year, right? So you, you can't really afford um, to do this, like especially the, the dog food approach. But again, it's, it's still nice, right? Because you don't have different, like it's, everybody will be, it's just, it just changes over time, but then you merge only one thing. You don't have like those like three, four way merges going on. Um, and I want to just show you guys quickly, like this is like the, the link for the original article is down there. I'm gonna make the slides available. This is like Paul Hammond just created, this is a very, I think it's a very nice uh, resource if you want to look like at different benching models, how they play together, especially like with the QA row. Like I mentioned, some people will have the QA branch that will merge stuff into and then the QAs will merge into production and how to handle like toggles or rollbacks. So you see like the number of releases a day or a month <laughs> um, against like versus all the other aspects of it. So I think this is a very nice thing, especially to get the conversation started. Um, but yeah, this is gonna be available there. And I think to, to sum it up, I just wanna leave this quote again because I think this kinda, if I, if I could give this talk, if you just read this, you kinda get an idea what this talk was about, right? So again, branches are not evil, but don't use them for evil purposes. Right. Thanks everyone. with the main mm -hmm. and once the feature is complete it's pulled into it's like it's hidden rather than hidden in the main it's in a separate branch it's mm -hmm. all the tests and everything is passing and then it goes into that yeah. so is there something wrong with that approach so let imagine this is like better because you have like main being but you, what if you have two or like ten branches right but every branch takes the main but takes main but you don't take each branch between themselves, right? So, you in case of say main branch, the feature lies and it is staged in two parts. So, after first part, uh, you open it up in the main itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Likewise, this gets integrated back into the main when harm done. And so, I think that the, the point here is like it's still much better than just being isolated. Like some tools will actually do that automatically for you. Like you have a branches, they'll, they'll merge, they'll rebase everything together and run that like several, if you have like three branches, they'll run three different builds, merging main into uh, those. But then again, like, like I said, if you have like say three different teams working on it and then you're getting main. So like your feedback, you could, if everyone is committing to main at the same time, you'd get much faster feedback than just getting main. Because maybe 
like feature number one, let's say, right? That finishes, and then you merge that into main. But then those, like feature two, started at the same time as feature one, and then they'll just get to know that those changes are actually there when feature one ends, and then you merge that into main, right? You see, you see the difference? It's just like, you, you know that the features work in isolation, but you're not sure that they work together, right? Cut off, you think, after which of feature branch just becomes bad. What if feature branches have a life of uh, six hours, two days? Is there, do you draw, draw a line somewhere where this, you think that now they're becoming evil? Or oh, I see, I see. So essentially, like, so some people will say, and I agree with that, like, uh, your local copy is a feature branch, essentially, right? All the time, like, if you're working on a given day. So it's hard to say, like, draw a like, specific line, because there are different constraints. Like, if you're on a plane for 14 hours, you, there's nothing you can do, like you're working on your feature branch for, for those 14 hours, right? But that's acceptable, right? So I think this is, it's not about the time, it's just the concept, right? If you, have, if you are gonna merge it back, some people are actually gonna like local copy, right? So they'll check out master and then they'll create a branch uh, to work off, but that's like, everything is local. So they are not impacting anyone. So I think that's, that's usually okay. I would say like if I had to, to say a number, I would say one day, like you should integrate at least a day, but then we go back to like continuous integration and other different topics. But I think if you do it frequently, you just catch issues uh, much sooner. Like for example, if I start working on a given feature in the morning and then the other pair next to me starts refactoring that very feature, like if none of us are actually checking in, it might take like one or two days until someone checks in and someone pulls to see that. Right, and we, like if you catch that in like in the first minute, you just like, we're gonna talk among yourselves and say no, oh, maybe we should wait, wait right? Because we can't really start working on this because you guys are refactoring, right? So I think it's all about communication and like getting uh, like input faster 